All right, so today's class. Crept it on the wheels. So we we're going to read today. Um, uh, we're going to read Acts, the 15th chapter. Acts, the 21st chapter. And we're going to start putting this stuff together. Can I tell you something? I'm, I have, uh, get a liar. I know I keep on you. I'm having difficulty seeing myself. Like, is it either you guys are dimming the screen up there. Is it that you really don't want me to look up at myself anymore? Is that what it is? No, 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 no don't do that. <laughs> I, I know I, I got. I don't know what it is with the screen, but I just found myself. There we go. I can see myself better. All right. Anyway, Acts the fifteenth chapter. Uh, let's begin. Fifteen and one. The book of Acts, chapter fifteen, in verse one. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, "Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved." So certain brother came down from Judea and said, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses. What I want everybody to do is to keep in mind um, these words. Circumcised after the manner of Moses. Remember that. Don't separate the word circumcised from after the manner of Moses. Keep that uh, in conjunction, all right? Circumcised after the man of Moses. So read it from the top one more again. And a and certain like men, Nathaniel just now, <laughs> which came down from Judea, taught the brethren and said, "Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved." It says, "You cannot be saved except you be circumcised after the man of Moses." Is that true? No. Now, mind you, let me say this. There was, we're going to read about the laws concerning being circumcised and on the eighth day. Let, let's go to that real quick. Hold this. Let's go to the book of uh, yes. Leviticus, the 12th chapter. And let's start with verse 1. Sorry. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, and verse 1. And now, the Lord now, for you, uh, for you uh, that's newly learned the Bible, I'm talking about you Christians that's going to finally start reading the Bible. For, for real now, Leviticus is in the Old Testament, all right? It's in the beginning of the book. All right? <laughs> and if you're not sure, you can just go to the, the beginning and tell you where each one is, okay? We'll be patient for you. All right, let's go. Leviticus, chapter 12, and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman hath conceived the seed, and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall be unclean. So a woman, when she gives birth, she's unclean because of her, uh, the issue that she'll have in her blood. Uh, for a man child is what, 80 days? No, 40 days. Woman child is 80 days. Uh, but on the eighth day, she has to bring the child forth for the circumcision. So I'll read on. Verse 3. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So you brought, read on. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. <laughs> and she shall touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. Right. So I read on. Uh, let's jump on down. Let me see. Jump on down to verse verse 6. Verse 6. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. Who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law of her that has born a male or a female. So here's the point. Uh, being circumcised after the man of Moses, meaning when you gave birth to a male child, on the eighth day you brought him to be circumcised, then you count 32 days later, which will give you 40 days, and then you had to bring an offering. A female child, it was 80 days, and then you bring an offering. You bring an offering to the priest, okay? 
Now, the question is, well, let's go back. We'll just do it a little slower. Um, let's read that again back in Acts 15. Start with verse 1 again. The book of Acts, chapter 15 and verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So, these men that came in from Judea start teaching, and this was, they were teaching, I, I want to say it was Antioch or someplace, chapter before, we'll, we'll clarify it. But they came in and started teaching, listen, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. There's no hope for you. Well, to be circumcised after the man of Moses, that means you would have to have been circumcised when? On the eighth day. But, you, but, you're, but you're 48 now. So they're saying there's no hope for that person. So Paul and Barnabas had a disputation with these men that came in from Judea. And they determined that they should go up to Jerusalem to the elders about this question. What is the question they're going to ask? What is the question they go to Jerusalem for? Okay. What we only read two verses. What is the question? Okay, just talk loud. Oh, got a mic. After the man of Moses. Okay, right. the The question was to be that you had to have been circumcised after man of Moses. Give back to him again. And the man of Moses is what? Being circumcised by a Levite. Mm, no. What was the man of Moses? <laughs> okay. I, something missing. You had to bring an offering. After the circumcision, on the, 30, on the eighth day, 32 days later, you came back and you brought an offering to the Levites. That was the man of Moses, all right? So that was the argument. Was the argument about being circumcised? Brothers, answer. No, it was not about being circumcised. That was never a question, do you have to be circumcised? What me ask you a question. Let me see if you're all thinking. Why do you think there was an argument between uh, Paul and Barnabas and the men that came in from Judea? What were they arguing about? Anybody? Right here, get a liar. Because uh, <clears throat> they were saying that you don't have to do any more sacrifices anymore. Uh, they who? Uh, Paul and Barnabas, they were saying that all you have to do is believe on Christ. And right. that was contrary to what the Levites were doing. Right, that was a very good answer. That's part of it. Well, that is the answer, to be honest with you. Uh, but I wanted you to add in, they said, if your words are circumcised after the man of Moses, you can't be saved. So <laughs> you just shut the kingdom of heaven <laughs> on all these people. So Paul and Barnabas had a disputation with them about this, going back and forth. They said, you know what? We're going to have to go to Jerusalem to the elders about this question. Let's read on. Acts chapter 15 and verse 3. And being brought... On their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. So verse 3, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. So they're passing through Man, I should have had you pull up maps so people could see it, but it is what it is. Um, I didn't want to make it that kind of class, but they came. Uh, it, would it be too hard? Uh, just pull up a map of um, Samaria, a map, a map of Samaria. It should say Antioch on the map 
also. Anyway, so they began to, uh, on their way to back to Jerusalem, they started talking to the brethren and saying, look, we want to explain to you the conversion of the Gentiles. The Gentiles were who? The Gentiles were the scattered Israelites. Give me um, Ephesians 2, verse 11. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. It says, remember, in times past, you were called what? Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. It says, at one time, you were called Gentiles. In the past time... He was saying, you in the church of Ephesus, you were called Gentiles. How, how do we know that he's not talking to the natural Gentiles, meaning the other nations? How do we know that? Let's begin in Ephesians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. Who are the saints? The Israelites, Psalms 148 and 8. Uh, 14. And 14. Run through that real quick. Hold this. For those that you know that's new to these classes... Uh, some of you already know these scriptures, so you know it should be easy for you. But for those that don't know, we're going to clarify. He said he's writing to the saints that are Ephesus. Who are the saints? Psalms chapter 148 and verse 14. He exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. That word even means indeed of the children of Israel. The saints are the children of Israel. So let's go back. That's how we know the subject matter he's talking about in Ephesus on the book of Ephesians. This, here, the uncircumcised or the Gentiles are referring to the Israelites that took on Gentile customs. All right? It happened at time, or it happened to him many times, but I just used, in that time, the most recent would have been following the Greeks when we became penalized under Antiochus or Alexander. And we took on their customs. So in uh, Ephesians 2 and 11, it says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. And you were called uncircumcised, which is a synonym or another way of saying Gentile or heathen. It says you were called uncircumcised by those of the circumcision. Those of the circumcisions are those men that were from Judea that came into Antioch that came into Ephesus, that came into Galatia, that came into Rome, that taught, saying, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, meaning on the eighth day, and bring an offering, that you cannot be saved. That right there was a cut. So he was telling them that the label that was put on those Israelites that were not living in Judea, primarily Judah, Benjamin, Levi, were considered Gentiles. Read verse 12. Verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ. When you were living like a heathen, like a Gentile, like the uncircumcised, when you were, when you were rioting in drunkenness and whoring, when you were in idolatry, it says that at that time you were without Christ when you were living like that. Read on. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth that Israel had, what is our commonwealth? What wealth do we have in common? Let me ask you, brothers, what, what's another word for wealth? Rich. What is the riches that we have? The kingdom. Something else. What is the wealth that we have? Right. So, This is old wealth right here. This is what makes us special right here. This was committed unto us. Remember it says in, in uh, uh, Romans... Revelations 2, it says, I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not. What a synagogue of Satan, he says, I know thy works, thy tribulations, but thou art rich. We weren't rich financially. We were rich because this was committed unto us. Romans 3. This is what was committed unto us. So that's our common wealth. And in that, like our officer was saying, brings us to the kingdom. So read verse 12 again. Verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, 
being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants. From the co- you were strangers for the covenants. What was one of the covenants? Circumcision. Circumcision wanted to come. You were strangers for the covenants. You didn't know. You was having a toga party. You didn't know. You were strangers from the covenants, the promises, the agreements. Read on. Of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And you was without the most high in the world. Read on. But now in Christ Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus. Ye who were sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You're brought back in by Christ dying. So when you had somebody telling you, except you were circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved, Paul and Barnabas like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, they're made nigh by the blood of Christ. You can't hold that to their charge. Yeah, they were far off, but now they can be brought back in. But here's the thing. Their argument was you had to have been circumcised after the manner of Moses. Paul was an expert in the law. Peter was the head of the church, but he was not as thorough as Paul was. Remember, God showed Paul many things, many things. Hold that real quick. Let's go back to whole Acts Let's go back to, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Give me a second, I got to find it. 2 Corinthians 11, bear with me, bear with me. Oh, it's going to be hard to find it in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. Start with verse. Start with verse uh, five. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven and verse five. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chief, chiefest apostles. He said what? For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. He said I suppose that I was not a whit or a little bit behind the chiefest of apostles. He said, I wasn't behind them. What does he mean by that? Who can answer it? Nobody? Right. He said, I wasn't a whit behind the chiefest of apostles in my knowledge. Read on. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly... Thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. He said, though I might be rude in speech, rude in speech don't mean he was cursing anybody out. Rude in speech meaning he was not able to dialogue in certain languages. He didn't have it. He's like, I'm, I'm kind of crude in the way I'm speaking. But don't think because I can't speak the language the way don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm thorough. But he had to explain it to them why. Go back in the chapter. Chapter 11, verse 1. Verse 1. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. He said, I espoused you, I taught you to follow one man to prepare you for Christ. Read on. Verse 3. But I fear lest any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says that your minds might be uh, that your minds might be corrupted in the simplicity in Christ. Why? Because you had men coming from Judea telling you, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you can't be saved. And then you see these guys coming, you're like, oh man, I don't know what we're gonna do because you know. Well, you know, the best you can do is go to Jerusalem, offer up a sack, get circumcised, and offer an offering up to, uh, to the priests. But, you know, you, just the way you got to come through. Paul's like, what are you talking about? But we're going to backtrack a little bit because I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to Acts, the 15th chapter. So we're going to pick up at verse 3 again. The book of Acts, chapter 15 and verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through the Phoenix, 
passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. So now they passed through. Now they finally got back to Jerusalem. They're back there. Now this question had to go before the elders. The elders they were going through was not the Pharisees and these men that didn't believe. They came before the apostles. Barnabas and them were being received by the apostles. Bar Barnabas and Paul. Read on. To consider the matter. What is the matter that they had to consider? The apostles. What is the matter that they had to consider? What was the question they were going to ask the apostles? Um, I think it was about the circumcision. What was the question, the initial question they had? What was the argument about? The disputation. Honestly, I'm not sure, sir. Somebody help him out. Right there, Azriel. Being circumcised after the manner of Moses. Very good. The question they were going to Jerusalem was being circumcised after the manner of Moses. The question wasn't about being circumcised. Being circumcised after the manner of Moses. Okay, read on. Verse 5 of Acts 15. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying... Now, stop. Uh... They rose up a sect of the Pharisees which believed. Who can explain that? Who can explain that? Nobody. Sect of the Pharisees which believed. I'm listening. Uh, is that talking about uh, the Pharisees that crept in to see what was going on in the church? Repeat again. Uh, the Pharisees that had crept into inside the church to see what was going on. Give me the belief part. Believe the what? I'm listening. They believed. Uh, they believed in Christ. Right. Very good. Right. They believed in Christ. They were also the second of Pharisees, which believed on the prophecies of Christ's coming. They believed on him. So read that verse again. Verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Mm. Some of the Pharisees who was amongst them that believed on Christ said, we've determined that it's needful for them to be circumcised and to keep the law of Moses. They're agreeing that you had to have been circumcised after the manner of Moses. Read on. Verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been a much dispute, disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by the mouth should hear the word of the by, gospel. By the Gentiles by my mouth. By my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So Peter got up and began to speak. He said, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, God made choice amongst us that the Gentiles by my mouth, he said, God has chosen me out of all the men by my mouth, should hear the gospel, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. When did the word of the gospel go to the Gentiles by Peter's mouth? One hand. Yeah. Acts the 10th chapter. Acts the 10th chapter with Cornelius. That was that big thing that Peter had concerning um, <clears throat> the Gentiles being converted in. He thought it was talking about unclean beasts. God came back and showed him he was referring to man. That these scattered Israelites could have been brought back into the fold. And amongst his men that were with him, you had some of those of the, of the circumcision which were astonished when you read Acts 10 that these men was receiving the Holy Ghost by just saying they believed. So he, better, he began to explain to all the apostles, listen, 
Remember, God showed me this a long time by my mouth that, the, that these Gentiles uh, can repent. Verse 8. Verse 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And that's found in Acts the 10th chapter, the last couple verses. Read on. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. He said, and what? Uh, you know what? Real quick. I said, um, read verse 8. Verse 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Let's go to uh, Acts of Tenth chapter, so I can explain it. Acts 10. Verse. Verse 44. The book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. It says the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Well, he spoke. Read on. And they of the circumcision. They of the circumcision, which came from Judea. Which believed. Which believed on Christ. Were astonished. They were astonished. Oh, snap. Why? As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how it was made nigh back by the blood of Christ. Upon them was poured out the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. That's why I tell you, church is a joke. Oh, God, you go to church, man. They make you. That's the worst place to go. That's the worst place to go. They're going to confuse you and have you believing all kind of foolishness. All nations could be saved. Let's, to my own nations. Let's go back to uh, Acts 15. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse, verse eight. 8. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Read on. Even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them. And put no difference between us. Us would be, Paul was what? Paul was a Pharisee, raised up as a Pharisee. He was of the circumcision and them. Put no difference between us and them. Hold this. Go to the book of Romans 10. The book of Romans chapter 10. Verse 11. The book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Here you go. Here come Christianity falling off the side of the horse. Read on. Verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Put a no difference between us and them. Why he says there's no difference between Jew and Greek. Corinth was where? Part of Greece. He was saying, or Asia Minor, I should say. Well, it was Greek, it was Greek influenced. He said... Pull up a map real quick. For some reason, is Corinth on the Asia Minor side? It's on the Greek side. You pause it. Pull up a map real quick. Ephesus is on the Asia Minor side. Ephesus is on the Asia Minor side? I know that part. I, just, I don't know why my mind is not. Didn't we see Corinth? Yeah, Corinth. Thank you. So that we said put no difference. Thank you. Put no, point to it. You have a point to there? Point to Corinth for the people that's online watching. All the way right there. See? Okay, so go show Ephesus, show Antioch, and then it came down from Antioch. There's another Antioch. Keep on going to Syria. Keep on going down there by Syria. That's other, that was named after Antiochus, Antioch. And then when you came down into Jerusalem, all the way down. Caesarea named after Caesar. Okay, good. So he said that there's no difference. He said he put no difference between Jew and Greek. Here you go. You think Greek is talking about the red man, Esau. Caucasians, it's not, we were in Asia, we were in Corinth, we were in Rome, we were in Greece, we were throughout Asia Minor, all throughout Babylon. So, read that verse again. Romans chapter 10 and verse 11, or verse, verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 
it says, for the same Lord is over all, it says, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. They're rich, them that call upon him, because they have a commonwealth. <laughs> Read on. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, now here you go, you hear that word whosoever, and your mind goes just default to, see, it's talking about everybody. No, it's not. The Bible's written by the Israelites, for the Israelites, to the Israelites. So when you hear words, whosoever, whosoever of Israel, Acts 2.21, when you get a chance, if I'm correct, right? Yes. It, it explained whosoever is Israel. Whosoever of Israel. It's not, it's not all, this Bible's not for everybody. It, the words were only committed to the Israelites. So let's go back. We just read, there's no difference between Jew and Greek, and we explained it. Let's go back to Acts 15. What verse did you leave off at? Verse 8 into verse 9. Read. Verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? It says, so now, listen to what he says. This is Peter speaking now. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. What was the yoke that he was referring to? What was he saying? Who can explain that? What was he saying? What was the yoke? Ah, it's only here. Okay, James. It was referring to the law of sacrifice. Right, okay. It was referring to the law of sacrifice. Why was it a yoke that we were not able to bear? Listening? Uh, because we, um, we, we kept sinning and we kept, you know, sacrificing animals over and over again, so. Okay. When you have something on your shoulder, right, a yoke that you're not able to bear, what happens if you put something heavy on you that you're not able to bear? It's going to make you fall, right? It was saying that this yoke, they were not able to bear. Watch this real quick. Hold this. Let's go to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians. Oh, wow. I can't find Galatians. There we go. Galatians 5. Uh, bear me one second. Five and one. Galatians chapter five and verse one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. It says, "Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free." Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. Read on. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And be not again entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage was the sacrificial law that says the liberty we have in Christ is what? What is the liberty we have in Christ? Uh, grace. 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 And grace is supposed to teach us to do what? Deny ungodliness. Right. So don't think grace is the... the uh, the, the uh, car blanche to sin. Like, I'm under grace and I could just be a sinner. No. Nah. That's what your lying churches teach you, that you're under grace and not under the law. You're not under the law of sacrifice. Why? Because your black behind will be the sacrifice. The grace is supposed to teach us to deny. And it is a grace period to get right. So read that verse again. Mm. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Read on. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Whoa, it says, if you be circumcised, Christ is not going to profit you nothing. Read on. Verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you. No, verse 3. 
Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you get, come on, Paul, what are you saying? You're saying if you're circumcised, you're wrong to being circumcised? Is Paul telling them that if you get circumcised that you're wrong? What is Paul trying to say? That, let me tell you something. This right here, is, it ain't hard, but it's way over the Christian head. Christians don't even understand the Israelites. They, they think you could eat pork. Lord, this is way over their head. Read on. Okay, let me explain to me. Uh, he's basically saying that if you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, meaning you're doing it with the sacrifice right. mindset and everything like that. Right. You're, you're going to be adapted to the whole law now. Meaning, okay, you want to be circumcised after the man of Moses. You want to give an offering up. Okay, now you're going to have to keep all the sacrificial laws. And guess what? It was impossible. Because that means three times a year you have to go to Jerusalem. You can't say, oh, my bad. I can't make it. Uh, you have to bring an offering. The feast of your first fruits. That means you had to have land where you grew it. You had to do these things. And guess what? You had to bring them before the priest. 70 AD was coming. When that temple fell, there was no priest. It ain't no more trying to re-explain to God, you're going to be adapted to that whole law now. You can't say, I brought it. God don't want to hear it. So you could be in the liberties of Christ. I still have to keep the laws. Or you could be adapted to the whole law and all those sacrificial rituals of washing. and You got to do it all. And if you sin at one point, you break all of it. You're better off on Christ. So let's read that one more time. Galatians chapter 5, verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. We know. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. That's why the churches are out of their mind. They read that and said, Christ has become no effect unto you. Whosoever therefore justified by the law. See, if you justify by the law because you wear fringes and you got a beard, you're trying to be justified by the law, then, then, then you are fallen from the grace of Christ. That's why Creflo Dollar, that pulpit pimp, said, if you're keeping God's commandments, you're sinning. What are you, a retard? <laughs> what kind of stupid understanding? If you're keeping God's laws, you're sinning. You're keeping the laws, you're sinning. I thought sin was a transgression of the laws. You're not under grace. And grace is supposed to do what? Ungodliness is another word for that is sin. Teach us to not sin. So let's go back. Why is Paul saying this? Again, 5 and 1. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us He's free. He's telling you all, Galatians, stand fast in the liberty. Stand fast. Hold fast. Do not be moved away. Don't let nobody come in and tell you, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you can't be saved. Stand fast. I'm not a whit behind the chiefest apostles at Galatians 2. Verse 1. No. Galatians Where you said that? 3, verse 1. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. He said, you foolish Galatians, who has fooled you? I mean, I taught you stand fast in the liberties that you have. Who has come in here and beguiled you all? What had happened? Who had done it? Somebody came with a bed, long fringes on, and said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. I'm 14 generations of my family's name, and except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, and here you come, you just came from a toga party last week. You're like, well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, and he's like, well, I'm just telling you. You see, you see my fringes, how long they are. You know, righteous, and look at you, you're like, oh. It's like you guys who play basketball, you see Michael Jordan, you're like, oh. It's Michael Jordan, and it's, it's Michael. Michael said I have to buy his sneakers to jump higher, and you guys are like, oh, let me run to Foot Locker. <laughs> you guys are like, 
So these men came in here and they beguiled them. And Paul said, do I have to tell you, I'm not a wit behind the chiefest of apostles. I'm telling you, I know these scriptures. I was raised a Pharisee. Now I got to boast myself so you all can understand. Who came in and fooled you all? Uh, read on. Verse 2. Galatians 3 and 2. This only what I learn of you, received ye, by, you received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Did you receive this by the law or hearing of faith? Cornelius received it by the hearing of faith. He didn't go and sacrifice nowhere. He heard and the Holy Spirit was granted unto him. Read on. Verse 3. Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Have you, have you, are you so foolish that you've begun the Spirit? Read on. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Are you now going to be made perfect by what? By sacrificing fleshly commandments like bringing a goat? Is that You think bringing that goat is going to make you right with God? He said his only begotten son. And you think the goat is better than him? The turtle dove? Read on. Have ye suffered so many things in vain? Have you went through all this in vain? Man, I left you guys here, and now I come back, and I'm here. I'm writing to you guys in here. You guys are bugging out. Let's go to chapter 5. 5 again. What was we in 5 just now? What was in 5? Um, we finished. Uh, first, go jump to verse 13. Verse 13 of no, Galatians. No, I don't want, I don't want 13 yet. What's the last verse we read? We read verse 4. Read 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. By what? By faith. Read on. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. It says, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, or, nor uncircumcision. God has no respect to person, the circumcision or the uncircumcised. If you are circumcised and you're wicked, it don't matter. And if you're uncircumcised and you're wicked, it don't matter. God has no respect to person. There's no difference between Jew and Greek. It says, but faith which worketh by love. Your faith in Christ which worketh by love. And love is what? You keep the commandments because you have faith in Christ. And if you have faith in Christ, Christ says, if you love me, and to love Christ mean you go, it's going to constrain you from, man, this stuff ain't hard. This stuff is elementary. This stuff is very simple. But for you all that go to church and Afterwards, go downstairs and have pickles, pig feet. You can understand why you don't understand this when you read it. You got to celebrate Christmas and, and Mother's Day and then in 4th of July. And, you know, you, you would never understand what he's saying here. This stuff ain't hard stuff. Okay. Watch this. Jump to verse 13. Galatians chapter 5 and verse no, I'm 13. I'm sorry. Read on. Verse 7, ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth. He said, you were running well. Who came in and hindered you that you should not obey? The who was it that came in here and messed you up? Those false, those false brethren that crept in unawares. Those are the ones that hindered you. Hold this, Jude 1. I need to come right back here. Bear with me. Let's start with verse 1. I want to get forward to the, the... The book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, a brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in, Christ, in Jesus Christ. Read on. And called, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Read on. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith 
which was once delivered unto the saints. That you contend, you earnestly contend for the faith. Don't give up. Earnestly contend. Read on. For there are certain men crept in unawares. You have certain men that crept in unawares amongst you. Read on. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. And some of them are just, they, they, they are ordained from the beginning to this condemnation. They're going to fall away. There's certain men that's crept in amongst you, that unawares, that you don't know, that look like they're righteous, that look right, but they were already condemned, ordained of old to the condemnation. Read on. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace that you have in Christ that's supposed to teach you ungodliness into lasciviousness. That, t- that takes this grace and use it now. That's why Paul said in Romans 6, grace, I forgot it, but it's Romans. <laughs> shall, shall we sin that grace may abound? Yeah, shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, we must not sin. We must establish the law. I brutalized that, but that's what it means. Go back and read Romans 6. Read on. Into lasciviousness and denying. And what? And denying. And doing what? And denying the the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You had some men that came in and denied Christ as being the way. They were trying to take you back to sacrificing. You know why? Because they could have been lascivious. And they know what? I'm going to go offer up a turtle dove or whatever. Whatever they might have done. Under Christ, you get to the point where Christ said, no, no, no. I died once for you. You're going to die for your own sins. You continue like that. So they, these men crept in on the wares that denied Christ. And while they were there, what were they doing? Whispering in your ears. You know, except you'd be circumcised after the man of Moses. You know what? They led people away. And Paul said, man, who have bewitched you? What is happening to you? Let's go back. Acts 15. Oh, no, no, hold on. First John, I forgot. First John. First John said something very similar. First John 2. First John 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. First. Oh, yeah, 219. Here we go. 19. The book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. They went out from us. There's men crept out of the wares. They ended up leaving from us, and it manifested. They were not really with us from the beginning. But they went out that it might be manifest. That it might be manifest that they were not all, that they not all, I'm sorry, that they were not all of us. So you got people amongst you that crept in unawares that's not really with us. And they're going to be turned aside to lasciviousness and denying Christ. All right, that's all I really want from there. Ah, uh, verse 22, read that. Verse John chapter 2 and verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is Christ, he is an antichrist. And that was that we just read in Jude. He's a liar that denied, he's the antichrist. Read on. That denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same also, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Read on. Watch this. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. Let that stand fast in the faith. Let that abide in you that you heard from the beginning. Read on. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Let nobody separate you from the love of God. That's what he said in uh, Romans 8. Let's go back to Acts 15. What verse was left off with? We read uh, verse the 10. yoke. Mm-hmm. Um, why am I? Th- give me a second. I'm thinking of a word. It's the word that comes to my mind. I don't know if it says it. All right, let's move on. I can't think of it.
11. Acts chapter 15 and verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. We don't. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave the audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles. So now they all, after Peter spoke, they gave audience to Paul and Barnabas, and Paul and Barnabas began to tell them all the miracles. Well, listen, we went to Galatia. We've been to Ephesus, Corinth, Rome. We have many believers throughout all these regions that believe on Christ. You have proselytes, them coming back, Acts 2, to come serve God. Look at the work that God is doing. Now, strike that last thing I said in Acts 2 for a reason. I'll get back to that in a second. But Because Acts 2 was prior to Paul's conversion. Um, but he said, look at these men all around these places that believe on God. Verse 13. Verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Then they finished speaking. James said, Men and brethren, listen to me. Read on. Simeon had declared how God at the first. When he says Simeon, he's talking, he talking about Simon or Simeon talking about Peter. Read. Hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Mm -hmm. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Stop right there. So now James began to speak. And J James said, he answered and said, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Listen to me. Simon Peter, or Simeon, have declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So we can safely say that James understood and believed, right? Hold this. Go to James 1. Look who James wrote to. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, wait, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So Read. James is writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. He was writing to them. He understood this. This was his letters to them. Now watch this. Um, read on. Verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye have fallen into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith is going to work your patience, it's going to build you up. You're going to be tried. You have men crept in. You can't give yourself over to lasciviousness. Read on. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience have a perfect work. Be patient. Her perfect work is going to build up your faith, that you'll lack nothing. Read on. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And if you're lacking wisdom because you don't know, study, ask of God. Read on. That giveth to all men liberally. Verse 8. Verse 8. A double-minded double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be double-minded. Don't be thinking that you have to sacrifice and believe on Christ. Don't think you don't be a double-minded person. Jump on down. Verse 13. Verse 13. Verse 12. Verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. We don't. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Verse 22. Verse 22. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man be beholding his natural face in a glass. So, something else. Here's the point. James is writing to the scattered, giving them instruction how to serve God, not being wavering, not being double-minded. Go back to Acts 15. The book of Acts, chapter 15. Verse 13. And verse 13. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take them out of a people from, for, for his name. Read on. And to this 
agree the words of the prophets. He said, and to this, what Peter, Simon Peter said, agree the words of the prophets. What he said was actually what the scriptures said. Read the word of the prophets. Read on. As it is written. And this, after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacles of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Read on. That the residents of men. That might, a residue. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Hold this book of Amos 9. Is that it? Yes, that got to be it. Amos 9. Verse 11. The book of Amos chapter 9 and verse 11. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. He's telling you about future prophecy. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that was fallen. The table, the, the tabernacle of David that was fallen. Remember, under David's rule, he had all 12 tribes was together. He's going to bring that back again. He said to this, the scriptures agree. So the vision that Peter had and his confirmation by the Holy Spirit given to Cornelius and those men are true, not based on Peter saying it, but the scripture says it. That's why James had no problem in James writing to the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered. He understood Deuteronomy 28, 64, Isaiah 11. James wrote about it. Peter wrote about it. Peter 1 and 1. James 1 and 1. Uh, Paul wrote about it. Ephesians 2. He said, to this, the scripture agree. Verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Read on. And close up the breaches thereof. Read on. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will rebuild it as the days of old. And I'm going to rebuild it as the days of old. When David was under rulership, all the kingdom was united. Read on. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And he says, and then here's the, here's the part I like personally. This is where it warms my heart. <laughs> when we come back together, and not until all 12 tribes come back together, all of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, all the 12 tribes, northern, southern kingdom come back together, then we will do what? Possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name. Say the Lord that doeth this. It says, and all the heathen that are called by my name, saith the Lord doeth this. And he says, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name. And all the heathen that are called by my name. We're going to possess, all 12 tribes are going to be brought back together like in the days of Edom. I mean, like in the days of David. And that, and when they come back together, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen that are called by my name. Who are all the heathen called by his name? Everybody outside of Israel. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you did not say Israel. We're going to possess all the heathen. That's why he said in, in um, Revelation 2, the ones that say they are Jews and are not by the synagogue of Satan. So we're going to possess all of Edom and everyone that is called by his name, but they ain't really his people. We're going to possess them. So James, understand when the prophet spoke, they didn't have no abstract thought where they just made up something. It had to be confirmed in the prophecies. You had to go back to some place. So who was more befitting to understand? Okay, let me go back. I'm stopping right here today. Because it's too much. I'll finish off on Thursday. But here's the thought. I got to take my daughter to school. He gave the understanding to Peter. Because Peter is the head of the church. That the northern kingdom and other ones can be brought back in, grafted back in. Romans 11. But the application of it to make it happen, he gave it to Paul. <laughs> The reason why he gave to Peter was, one, Peter was the head of the church. Even though Paul, for all intents and purposes, had more understanding than Peter. Why do you think so? 
Why do you think so? Why do I say Peter had more understanding than Paul? Paul had more understanding than Peter. What was Paul's occupation? Oh, no, no, forget. What was Paul? He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. What was Peter's? A fisherman. He was a fisherman. All right. He came up on this, under the feet of Gamaliel. This, Paul was thorough. But ain't nobody's going to listen to Paul. Paul was persecuting the church. <laughs> they was listening to him. Now he come back a couple years later to my, and they're like, nah, they wasn't going to receive him. Right. They was afraid of him. So Paul's ministry had to go to the Gentiles. He couldn't stay in Jerusalem. They would have killed him there. Mm -hmm. The, the, the Pharisees would have tried to kill him. So I'll give you this likewise today. God brings a revelation. He's not going to give it to a brother who just walked in the door to come and share before everybody. Everybody like, what the hell are you talking about? He would give it to, not that the young man may not have it, but he'll give it to the elders so they can explain it because they're going to be the ones that's going to disseminate the information. If you walk in the door and try to say it, they're like, nobody's going to listen to you. But they're going to listen to Paul. Christ said, upon this, Peter. upon Peter, well, I mean Peter, upon this will I build my church. This is the man I'm leaving here on earth to do my way, to do what I want him to do. But now when it's time to go to the scattered Israelites, it was going to be Paul's job. Because Paul understood the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament today. That's why he wrote the book of Hebrews. He was just cutting them. He was just tearing them apart, ripping them down. Because he was using the scriptures. One which we're going to eventually get to is circumcision was it wasn't given to the Levites. It was given to Abraham. We'll pick that up in Thursday's class. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry to cut you short today. I know it's only, what, an hour? But I got business to tend to. I pray today you receive something. And uh, Lord's Will Thursday, we'll pick back up and finish off of Acts 15, Acts 21, and the rest of these scriptures, all right? Uh, visit us at www.israelunite.org. And uh, stay tuned. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.